Assalamu alaikum. Good evening. Madam Home Secretary, my lords, Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and of course, my senior most dean of the diplomatic corps, Khalid, Brother Khalid. I welcome you all on the occasion of the Day of Pakistan. My special greetings to the Pakistani community on the auspicious occasion. It is a day we celebrate for the determination of displayed by the Muslims of South Asia and the dynamic leadership of Khaidaza Muhammad al Jinnah. His vision was for a modern, liberal, secular, and democratic Pakistan. He always believed priest practice, tolerance, peaceful coexistence, and equality for all Pakistanis, irrespective of caste, creed, color, or gender. Our founding fathers were, great, were greatest exponents of interfaith harmony and lead equality for all. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have been even present today. Democratic order is the result of unprecedented sacrifices by our leaders and people, our Shaheen Kutikarli Bhutto, preferred gallows over dictatorship, his beloved daughter Motama Benazi Bhutto gave her life to fulfill our founding father's dream of making Pakistan a progressive, dynamic, egalitarian democracy and also making it a remote role model for the entire Islamic world. We are determined to play this role. Our sacrifices against extremists and are continuing. The sacrifices made by Governor Salman Tasir, Minister Shabazz Bhatti, and thousands of security forces personnel and civilians are a testimony to our resolve to fight out this courage. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, being inheritors of martyred Mutrama Benazir Bhutto's legacy, President Zadari and Prime Minister Yusuf Raza Gilani are pursuing a policy of consensus and national reconciliation, a policy by and large supported by opposition parties as well. Ladies and gentlemen, since 2008 elections, the country has come a long way in strengthening democracy. It has restored the supremacy of the Constitution, sovereignty of the law, Parliament, rule of law, independence of judiciary, unshackled the media, maximized former provincial autonomy, introduced inequitable distribution of resources through National Finance Commission's award, and <coughs> address provincial nuances. Pakistan is today a vibrant and functioning democracy with a free media, independent judiciary, and a dynamic civil society. The resilience of our people and institutions and the commitment of our leadership to address the challenges have started giving results. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, during the past one year, government has taken successful measures to address the problem of energy deficit in the country as a, as a, as a top priority. While the economic fundamentals remain strong, our economic managers aggressively engaged in bringing about an economic turnaround despite the begging of economic problems. It has also come, as it all, it has also to grapple with the horrendous international economic recession and ever increasing food and oil prices in the international market. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are grateful to the British government and its people for having stood by us in our most difficult times, both in war against extremism and in the recent flooding that devastated millions. It is a matter of great satisfaction that Pakistan and UK relations have always been cordial and are growing strength to strength with each passing day. Our cooperation is multi multifaceted and encompasses economic, cultural, defense, and security issues. We are, we are closely cooperating in counter-terrorism efforts. Our bilateral trade is on the rise. We believe that the real strength of a country is our people, including our diaspora around the world, particularly those living in the United Kingdom. Over one million British Pakistanis have contributed tremendously to making that 
relationship between Pakistan and UK deeper and stronger. Presence of seven members of in the House of Commons, <coughs> three in the House of Lords, and Baroness Saida Warsi as a cabinet minister and chair of the Conservative Party are just a few samples of greater of the participation of the people of our heritage in the mainstream of British life. The contribution of our people to the British GDP is to the tune of over 33 billion pounds. It cannot be underestimated. We have role models like Saranwar Pervez, who has second largest wholesalers get conglomerate. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am confident that the British national, British nationals and part of Pakistan heritage will continue to play this steering role in the progress of Britain and Pakistan. I take this opportunity to call upon all the enterprising members of the Pakistani community to bring their investments into Pakistan. More so, the challenges of extremism makes it all the more imperative to make Pakistan, Pakistan's economy strong and stronger. I wish the members of the Pakistani community all the successes in their endeavors to further strengthen ties between Pakistan and the United Kingdom. They must contribute their maximum in Pakistan, make Pakistan a modern, democratic, and prosperous state. I would like to thank Home Secretary Theresa May for gracing the Pakistan Day reception tonight as the chief guest, despite her present official engagements. Her presence with us is a strong is a reflection of the importance of Pakistan always enjoys with the United Kingdom, its government, and its people. Last but not the least, we are also, Madam, profoundly grateful to your government for the extending Pakistan its strong support and unavailing support for the mark free market access to in the EU. Thank you, Ayat Commissioner. May I request the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps and Ambassador of Kuwait, His Excellency Khalid al Duwaisan, to please come and say a few words. My brother, Walid His Excellency, the High Commissioner of Pakistan, my brothers and sisters, you know, Your Excellency. It's, for me, it's a great honor, you know, to share with you this special day because I know, you know, that Pakistan is a country where achieved a, a lot, you know, since 15th of August 1947. And this year country is, as the High Commissioner, as you know, said, well, now a democratic country, a stable country, and uh, that the country, you know, produce a lot of the achievement, not for Pakistan, but for the whole continent and the world. And of course, you know, I want to stand, you know, between you and uh, the Home Secretary, but I would like, you know, to say a few words about you, that. Uh, Pakistani community here in the United Kingdom, you know, because really, you know, that, that uh, we admire your achievement in this great country and where you are in every field. So we see that, that when I see them, I say that, yes, I am a British from Pakistani origin. And it shows, you know, this thing and your presence <coughs> will strengthen the relation between this great country, United Kingdom, and Pakistan. And I think, you know, that, that you're cooperation together that is really you know will lead stability security and i hope you know that it's more prosperity to our world thank you very much for giving me this uh, opportunity to speak you know shortly about this great day and congratulate every one of you here and thank you for inviting me to say a few words in this special occasion thank you very much Thank you, Ambassador Khalid. And now I would like to invite the Home Secretary, Right Honorable Theresa May and P, to say a few words. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. High Commissioner, 
Ladies and gentlemen, I am truly honoured to have been invited here today to celebrate Pakistan's National Day with you. I visited Pakistan last year and I found my visit absolutely fascinating. From the beautiful Bachai Mosque in Lahore to the proud and generous people throughout Pakistan. Indeed, this beautiful shawl I was given by women at the Benazir Bhutto Centre for Women in Islamabad. I found your country a truly incredible place. Our countries have a long shared history, and they will have a long shared future. We are building on the many bonds that we share, extensive business links, close cultural connections, and of course deep family ties. As the High Commissioner said, there are now one million British Pakistanis in the UK. At any one time, there are around 80,000 British nationals in Pakistan. There are 1.4 million journeys between Pakistan and the UK each year, and by natural trade, now totals well over £1 billion per year. And in a world of globalised communications, the Daily Jack has 30,000 UK readers every single day, and the TV station ARY has around 45,000 UK viewers. So what happens in Pakistan matters to the UK and vice versa. These links provide our countries with great benefits, but they also provide opportunities to those who wish to do us harm. Tackling these problems requires a coordinated effort between us. There are so many issues on which we absolutely must work together. Trade, business relationships, defense, as well as all of the issues that I as Home Secretary am responsible for. Counter-terrorism, drugs, organized crime, migration, visas, the list goes on. We enjoy good working relationships on so many of these issues. But these are difficult times for Pakistan. Since the last National Day, you have faced the terrible monsoon floods. The British Pakistani community led the response to those floods, but the tragedy touched the hearts of all the British public, whatever their background, and their swift and generous response is something that I think we can all be hugely proud of. But the tragic murders of Shabazz Bhatti and Salman Tazir before him remind us, if any reminder were needed, of the ongoing threat of terrorism and extremism that Pakistan faces. The terrorists seek not only to attack the Pakistani government, but also to attack the very principle of democracy, the people of Pakistan, their freedom and their future. We here in the UK recognize the tremendous sacrifices, both civilian and military, that Pakistan is making in the fight against terrorism. But whatever challenges Pakistan faces, Britain will stand by its side. So as we celebrate Pakistan's National Day, let us also celebrate the British Pakistani community here in the UK. Let us celebrate our shared history, our cultural and economic ties, and our close and enduring national friendship. Thank you.